Hey Froggy friends, Kiro Style here, welcome back to Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend. Thank you so much for joining me here on stream, especially those of you who are still sticking around. We just finished Moo's arcade mode, since she didn't have a story mode. Before we dive into the true ending of this game, we do have two bonus stories to play. Military Academy, EX1, and Sector 7, EX2. So these are both bonus stories that were included with Continuum Shift Extend. They were not in the base game or Continuum Shift 2. But uh, they're kind of insight onto the world building and some of the other characters in the game. Now, I don't think there's any actual fights in either of these, so it's just going to be straight up narration and listening to the characters talk. But uh, I actually don't remember if I watched these before. I mean, I must have, because I, ha I bought Continuum Shift Extend back in the day, but I just don't remember what happens in these. But I think each of them is under half an hour, maybe 40 minutes top, so uh, we'll go through them. So we'll start with e EX1, The Military Academy. So I think this takes place in the Military Academy back when Tsubaki, Noel, Makoto, Carl, and Jin were all still students. Which apparently that Military Academy is also founded by Relius. I'm not sure if that- I think it's founded before he falls into the cauldron a hundred years ago, but... Yeah, it wouldn't make sense, I guess, for him to be... For him to be founding it after he plops back out of the cauldron, but... I think a lot of the, There's a lot of, like, Blaze Blue side novels and manga that take place as prequels to Blaze Blue that occur at the Military Academy, sometimes focusing on different characters other than our main cast here, which is kind of interesting. So if you're really interested in the Blaze Blue universe, there is a lot of extra stuff to explore. Heart to Heart, extra episode. Oh, thank you for the stretch, Lurk. You guys should make sure you stretch at home as well. Little kitty. Little kitty. Why do your whiskers extend so far? Mew Mew Meow No Me Meow Mew Would that work better? Hmm Or should it be Me Meow? This is a lot harder than I thought But I feel like this phrase is essential to the poem I need to think about this more A sudden gust of wind whizzes through her hair and ruffles her skirt. The piece of paper is torn from her hand in the blink of an eye. Oh no! You've gotta be kidding me! Wait! Where... Where is my poem? Don't tell me that. Excuse me, that's actually mine. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I was jotting down some things when the wind suddenly... Jin, you look so different when your hair is being blown about and you're still wearing glasses. He didn't see anything, right? Please tell me he didn't read it. My poem... Uh, I'm so embarrassed, I can't even look him in the face. Is this yours? You really have to be careful with this wind. He almost looks kind of like a, like a young Jade Curtis from Tales of the Abyss here. I... I'm so sorry. I was... um... Is this your first year here? A new cadet, perhaps? Uh, um, yes. That's correct. Noelle slowly raises her head. You're the student body president, Jin Kisaragi! Noel remembers the scene from her entrance ceremony, a cute young man speaking before her class, welcoming them to the academy. It didn't take long for the girls to start fussing over him. <laughs> Noel doesn't know how to react to Jin's surprised look. Saya? Huh? Oh, no, it's nothing. I'm sorry. And you are? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm Noel Vermilion, a first year here. So you're Noel Vermilion. I've heard of you. You were ranked the highest on the Ars Magus aptitude test. That's pretty impressive. Oh no! Y you've got it all wrong! That seems to be the only thing I'm good at. <laughs> uh, I've lost track of time. I'm sorry, but I need to excuse myself. Mr. Kisaragi? Hmm? Is there something else? Um, do you think 
You could give me back that piece of paper? Oh, this. Jin hands over the crumpled piece of notebook paper. Noah looks at it, slightly dumbfounded. Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Sorry, it got crumpled. Huh? Mister? It's nothing. Later. Y yes Goodbye. Whew, that was scary. I never thought I would run into the Jin Kisaragi in a place like this. Hmm. But I wonder what was wrong. He looked really irritated. Did I accidentally bother him in some way? <laughs> Watching Jin walk away, Noelle's surprised by another strong gust of wind. It blows the grass up into the air and shakes the trees overhead. The sound of leaves and branches rustling in the wind should have been nothing more than pranks of the tree spirits, but an unknown and violent sound echoes throughout Noelle's entire body. <laughs> if Jin wore a miniskirt and took off his glasses, he'd almost be indistinguishable from Noelle. I mean, they keep saying that Noelle looks like Jin and Ragna's sister, Saya. What was that? Uh, not again. My head. It hurts. Uh, I feel sick. It feels like a jackhammer inside her head. She can't stop breathing heavily and her ears won't stop ringing. Far in the distance, she hears a voice. Her soda! Are you okay? Huh? Days and feeling faint, she slowly raises her head. Before her stands a girl with long red hair. Oh yes. I'm fine, thank you. Can you stand? Here, I'll give you a hand. I'm so sorry to cause you trouble. I believe you're supposed to thank someone who helped you, not apologize to them. Oh, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, thank you. I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Tsubaki. Tsubaki Yayoi. Yes, I'm Noel Vermilion. My prospective roommate. I look forward to spending time with you. Yes, me too. Um, you said your name was Yayoi, but you don't mean the Yayoi family of the Duodecim, do you? Mm hmm. Yes, that's right. Ah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Um, Noel? I can call you Noel, right? Don't concern yourself about families or backgrounds or anything. After all, we're attending the same academy, right? You're right. I'm sorry. Like I said, you don't have to apologize. Awkward silence. She can't possibly look Tsubaki in the eye. She can't even bring herself to look anyone in the eye. She is scared of showing her own face because she always looks like she is on the verge of tears. The girl who called herself Tsubaki Yayoi possesses cold, deep, azure eyes. Staring into them for too long makes one feel as though they were drowning in a bottomless ocean. Huh? Hey, do you mind not blocking the entrance? Oh, I'm so sorry! A squirrel beastkin walks through the door, her big brown eyes squinting. Her tense aura leaves no doubt her mood was foul. You're our other roommate, right? So we remember from Makoto's story, they talked about how before Makoto came to the category, or category, before she came to the academy, um, she had faced a lot of discrimination on being a beastkin, so she was very distrustful at first until she warmed up to Makoto and, or <laughs> Noelle and Tsubaki, not Makoto, that's herself. Which is very unlike her, because we know her as such a cheap, or, <laughs> why keep messing up my words? Or, like, upbeat... Spunky squirrel. Why does it say cheap? <laughs> it's nice to meet you. I'm Tsubaki Yayoi. Yeah, I figured as much from looking at the dorm assignment sheet. You're the daughter of the duo Decim, right? Huh? I'm Nanaya. Nanaya? Get out of the way. 
It's so weird to see her like this. Uh, I'm sorry! Throwing her luggage in the lower level of the bunk bed, Nanea quickly turns around and heads back to the door. Where are you going? There's a mandatory orientation for all the new students. Ah. Uh, Nanaya? Um, do you mind? The girl named Nanaya leaves the room, her large puffy tail trailing behind her. Tsubaki and Noelle watch her walk away for a few moments. Suddenly, Tsubaki glances at the clock. Oh my goodness, we've only got ten minutes. What would you like to do, Noelle? If you're really not feeling well, then I can tell our RA. I'm fine. I can make it. I see. Well then, shall we be on our way? We wouldn't want to be late on our first day. There are going to be a lot more obstacles ahead of us, you know. Yes. For no apparent reason, the word obstacle makes Noelle feel uneasy. It seems silly because it was just another word, yet hearing the word obstacle from this point on would stir up unwanted feelings deep inside of her. A few days later. I'm so sorry. I didn't see you there. Ugh. Oh no! Did you scrape your knee? Miss Nania, I didn't expect your blood to be red. What a pleasant surprise. <laughs> <sighs> How disgraceful. These humans who seek out those weaker and harass them so they can sustain their pathetic identities. They mistake the power that comes only in numbers for their own. Your eyes bad or something? Need some money for glasses? Wh How dare you? What makes you think we need to accept charity from the likes of you, you beastkin? You're right. It's your face that needs charity. I'm not sure if I can do anything about that. Ho ho ho! What was that? You better take that back! Red face and twitching from rage, the girl raises her hand to slap Nanaya. To the eyes of a beastkin, the girl's hand moves in slow motion. The attack is practically begging to be dodged. Seriously? Dodging this attack would only attract unwanted attention and rage. Nanaya isn't looking forward to what was about to happen, but she decides to take the hit. Suddenly another girl leaps into the middle of the battle placing herself between the two. The girl was none other than Noelle Vermillion. Oh. In a flash, Nanaya's body moves on reflex and instincts alone. The bully's hand landed dead center where Nanaya was a moment ago, hitting nothing. Losing her balance, the classmate awkwardly falls headfirst into a group of desks, stacked away in the corner. Wow, what a clumsy bully. Oh. Uh, uh. What the... Your cheek is cut! What's wrong with you? Hmm, your blood's red too, huh? Your heart's so black I was honestly expecting something else. What? What? You bitch! What's going on here? Settle down! You're injured. What happened? It was Nanaya! She... Nanya pushed her over and she got hurt! Nanaya did? We didn't even do anything to her. <laughs> you mean you couldn't do anything, right? Is this true, Nanaya? Hm. Who knows? Answer my question! What's your problem? You're just gonna barge in and yell at the top of your voice? Who put you in power anyway? Fair enough. I apologize for raising my voice. But violence really isn't the answer. Oh, the good old violent speech, huh? Yes, yes, I know, I was bad. It's the Beeskin's fault, right? Always the Beeskin. Now, can we just get on with our lives? Nanaya. What's with your attitude? You owe us an apology. Um... Noelle nervously makes her way to the center of the crowd. I saw the whole thing. Oh, really? Then why don't you tell us exactly what you saw, hmm? Classmate 1 sounds like Rachel. Like, Rachel's voice actress. We're the ones with the injuries here. It's that savage who's at fault. Why are we still having this discussion? But, but I saw it with my own eyes. Nanaya is not the one at fault. Are you seriously siding with this barbarian? What was your name again? Noelle Vermillion? 
Vermilion? I've never even heard of that family. Mind your place. You shouldn't even be speaking to us. But I just... Noelle's sliver of courage quickly disappears, and her expression speaks for itself. She is on the verge of tears. Most of today's world society is governed by the neatly defined class structure established by the Novus Orbis Librarium. From the estates to the slums, one's birthplace and heritage determines how people are assimilated into society. Of course, even the military academy of the NOL is not immune to such segregation. Silence! I'm so sorry! I didn't mean to! I wasn't talking to you, Noel. Huh? Tabaki glares at the group of classmates. I suggest you take a good look at yourselves in a mirror. You'll see an ugly face staring back at you. What? Oh. I can't even stand the sight of your deformed mouths from all the foul language and your sunken eyes from looking down at others. I truly feel sorry for your so-called family name. Ah? Uh? That's all you care about, right? One's heritage and species? Then why don't you all just leave and go ponder how lucky you are? That was uncalled for! Just cause you're a duodecim! Indeed! I am a member of one of the twelve families in the duodecim. Which is why I choose my actions carefully. I do not wish to smear the image of my family. The duodecim does not exist to oppress others. Under the order of the Librarium and Imperator, we are to sustain peace and order in the world. We want to create a world that's free of conflict. The Duodecim is at the front lines of this struggle, and we must set the example for others. At least, that's what I like to believe. Tsubaki's words are stern. Everyone in the room can't help but watch in awe. Her eyes never waver, readily apparent that there is not even a bit of doubt in her will. The group of classmates shrivel up in shame, exchanging uncomfortable looks at each other. Can I leave now? Nanaya? Nanaya! I need to disappear. If I just disappear, then there will be no more problems. <sighs> What's the sigh for, Tsubaki? Jin, I actually wanted to ask you something. It's about Nanaya. Yeah, her punishment was actually decided a little while ago. Huh? Punishment? A three-day suspension. She picked a fight with the wrong person, the daughter of a noble family. Uh, but she didn't do anything wrong. How can you be so sure? Did you see it with your own eyes? No, but I can kind of tell. That girl isn't the type who would hurt someone. Jin drops his gaze to the student record on his desk. A beast can, huh? Her Ars Magus aptitude is average, but her physical tests are off the charts. She would have no problem taking on a group of two or three people. <laughs> but I'm telling you, she isn't the kind of person to use violence. That's not what I was trying to say, Tsubaki. She's good, and that's why I'm relieved. Are you friends? Right now, we're just classmates. And, well, roommates, but... You want to become friends? Yes. Then just... Talk to her honestly. It's so weird to hear Jin giving good advice. Talk? I'm sure they understand, and I don't need to put it into words. Those are just misconceptions. A fantasy, Tsubaki. People will never get the real message unless you say it out loud. Even if those words end up being lies, you just have to figure out why they felt it was necessary to lie. What's most important is the communication is actually taking place. Communication? I suppose you're right. I haven't really talked to her in that way. I just always thought she understood me and that was it. Yeah, why can't Jin just stay like this? <laughs> it's not too late. Just tell her exactly what you just told me. It's a start. Jin, thank you. Jin smiles gently. Tsubaki loved that expression. One gaze at his smile could wipe all the worry and doubt from anyone's mind. I do like how this kind of frames a little bit more of, like, we know Tsubaki likes Jin because of their childhood, but we haven't really seen, well, we've seen limited interaction between them at the military academy, so you can kind of see a little bit more here. I'm going to go talk to her now. Because, like, our reaction, of course, with the way we know Jin is, like, 
Jin, really? That guy? <laughs> but for Tsubaki... Okay. Once more, Jin smiles. It makes Tsubaki's steps feel so light, as though she had wings on her back lifting her off the ground. But Tsubaki, in the end, it's impossible to truly understand anyone other than yourself. Everything you see, they're all lies. Like me, I'm crazy about my brother! Nanaya! Nanaya! I do like how this story seems to be touching upon a lot of things that we've heard about from the time in the military academy, like Tsubaki and her crush on Jin, Makoto's discrimination, Noelle being kind of shy and from this kind of fringe family that doesn't have much influence, Tsubaki having to uphold her duodecim lineage, like, it's covering a lot of bases that we've only been hearing about so far. I actually don't remember if Carl appears here, though. Are you okay? Do you want to rest, Noel? Don't worry about me. We need to find Nanaya. You're right. We are still on the Military Academy campus, but it's getting dark. It could be dangerous. Where could she have gone? Someone said that they saw her run into this forest. There's no time to confirm that. We need to act now. Yeah, you're right. Suddenly, Tsubaki stops in her tracks and turns back to Noel. Tsubaki? Is something the matter? Hey, Noel, I was wondering, why do you always talk to me like I'm nobility? Huh? We're classmates, after all. Doesn't it feel strange? Uh, I'm sorry. It's just I... And you're apologizing again. Huh? I'm sorry. Excuse me. All of your words, Noel, imply you've done something wrong and need to repent. It makes me feel as though I'm blaming you for something when I'm really not. Uh, I'm sorry. Again! <laughs> With her wrongs out in the open, Noelle uncautiously keeps her mouth closed. Tsubaki sighs. Well, no matter. We can continue this discussion later. Right now, we need to find Nanaya. You're right. I'm so- Catching herself mid-sentence, Noelle cups her hands over her mouth. Like a child, she looks up meekly, scared of the expression she would find on Tsubaki's face. <laughs> uh? I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> look, you've even made me apologize now. But really, I didn't mean to laugh at you. Uh, um... Because your face <laughs> looked like this rabbit my friend had when we were small. R rabbit <laughs> Yes, those big shiny eyes. They're so adorable. But that's... Ah, did I make you blush? Did I? N no, you didn't! <laughs> Don't lie to me. Your ears are as red as a cherry. No, I wasn't. You've got it all wrong. Oh, jeez. <laughs> there you go. That's more like how a friend would talk. Huh? Uh... Tsubaki gently smiles at Noelle. Unable to contain herself, Noelle lets out a small chuckle. You're even cuter than that rabbit when you smile. You... you didn't mean that. <laughs> oh, don't pick on me! Uh, Noelle, wait! I refuse to... Uh, I won't! Noelle, stop! There's a... Watch out! Huh? The ground below Noelle's feet suddenly collapses. Helpless, Noelle quickly begins to plummet. I, I'm falling! Noelle! Tsubaki reaches out in a desperate attempt to catch Noelle, but her sudden movements causes the fragile soil to crumble underneath her. Hurt. Huh? What's going on? But I thought we fell. Ugh. Can you get off of me? Huh? What? Uh, why are we sitting on top of Nanaya? Uh, 
I, I, I'm so sorry. Are you all right, Nania? You guys are way too heavy! Wait, do you mean you... you took the blow for us? Really? Wrong. I got caught. A accidentally. But your tail acted as a cushion. That's why we're unharmed from the fall. Uh. Nania, we actually wanted to talk to you. What? Noelle. S sorry. Uh, but aren't you guys cold at all? Now that you mention it, I don't feel the effect of Ars Magus anymore. Did we fall through the artificial ecosystem? We're in the lower levels of the city, the abandoned district. I doubt any of that hocus pocus Ars Magus would reach here. It's freezing. This isn't good. If the artificial ecosystem isn't working, then. Oh, thank goodness. The seether isn't too thick here. But the temperature will just keep dropping. The hierarchical cities were designed specifically to avoid the thick layers of seether that clouds the surface of the world. Without the protection of Ars Magus, your surface is uninhabitable. Noel's right white breath could be seen in the chilly air. The frigid temperature pierced the skin left uncovered by the Academy's uniform. <laughs> Which for Noel and Makoto was quite a bit. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Noel? Get a hold of yourself, Noel! Um, why don't you come over here? Huh? Hold on to my tail. It's pretty warm, see? S sorry Uh, I wasn't expecting an apology. Uh... Noelle, Nania, wait here. I'll go find a way out. Hey, now just wait a second. What? You sprained your ankle, right? I wouldn't push myself too hard if I were you. Uh, are you all right? <sighs> Could you seriously stop that? Always trying to endure all the pain yourself? It's kind of annoying. Then I'll say, you're pretty annoying yourself. Uh, huh? If only I weren't here. As long as I endure the pain, everything will solve itself. It's just like that incident in the classroom. That's how you live your life, isn't it? Uh, huh. Th that, that has nothing to do with you. What I do is up to me. Nanaya. I just like staying out of trouble. Nanaya vehemently mutters under her breath. Upon hearing her words, Tsubaki's eyes widen. So I was correct then. Huh? That is how you feel. I had a feeling that was the case. But I wanted to ask you directly. I no longer wish to just feel or think that was the case. Hear. Feel. Think. You mean to tell me you just took a stab in the dark? No. It was an educated guess. I observed you and analyzed the data before I came to that conclusion. Observed me? Why would you do that? Because I'm interested in you, of course. You're interested in me? Is it because I'm a squirrel, Beeskin? Huh? Nania, you're a squirrel type? Are you serious? You just figured that out? Oh, so that's why your tail is so big and fluffy. You have got to be kidding me. You couldn't tell from my tail? Well, I've never really seen a beastkin before, so I... And I've never seen a real squirrel either. That's got nothing to do with it. I'm completely different from you guys. What's so different about you? Different? Uh, the difference... Noelle innocently awaits Nanaya's response. Tsubaki also stares at Nanaya, eyes wide. Nanaya, feeling like a deer caught in headlights, is at a complete loss for words. I'm not. Every word Nanaya uttered only intensified her pain. I'm not different from anyone else! I'm not! I want to be the same. I just wanted to be the same. Nanaya's words came out in a rush, as if they were stuck at the back of her throat. 
Giant drops of tears rolled down the side of Nanaya's cheeks as her words continued to pour out. Nanaya? What? Why is she crying? N Noelle, you made her cry. Apologize to her. But you told me I shouldn't apologize anymore! There is always an appropriate time and place for apologies. This is one of them. Uh, I get it. You're right. Um... I don't need your apology. Uh? Huh? You've done nothing you should apologize for, Noelle. Nanaya? If you say so, Nanaya, then why are you crying? I don't know. Maybe... Maybe all the feelings I've had bottled up inside of me came out at once, and it was too much to bear. I hated myself, and the way I acted around others. Oh, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean, Nanaya. Whenever bad things happen to me, I just wash it all away by crying. It makes me feel so much better. So that's why I hear sobbing noises late at night. What? You mean you knew? Come on, even I knew. What? Oh no, that's just so embarrassing! Um, I've been meaning to tell you, but... Honestly, it's pretty creepy. So do you think you could stop it with the crying thing? Yeah, I don't think the bed is the best place. S -s sorry You apologized again. What? But wasn't that an appropriate time? I suppose it was. I'm so sorry! <laughs> <laughs> the three girls begin laughing, their bright eyes mirroring a reflection of each other. Not one of them tries to divert their eyes from their own reflections. Tsubaki, is that you? A voice came from above. Jin? Looking up, the girl see Jin's silhouette, lit up by the moonlight behind him. Whoa! Who is that person? He looks so awesome! It's Jin! He came to help us! Wait, Nania, you mean you don't even know the student body president? So he's the Jin all the girls have been talking about, huh? <sighs> Hang on, I'll get help right away! Okay! Well, at least you girls are all right. Gently pushing his glasses up with his fingers, Jin glances at the girls standing before him. Tsubaki, Noel, and Nanaya. Watching Jin sigh, the three girls exchange winks. I fail to see the humor. In case you didn't notice, I'm not pleased right now. S sorry I will now give you your punishment. The outcome was decided by the entire student council, so don't bother trying to appeal. What? Noelle and Tsubaki have to be punished too? They didn't do anything wrong. I'll take all the punishment. Besides, I I'm used to that sort of thing anyway. Did you not hear me? You're all guilty and there are no appeals here. The three of you will all receive the same punishment. Same? For the next week, you three are responsible for all the dormitory's cafeteria duties. Help each other out, okay? <sighs> Your response? Yeah. yeah. Yes! yes! Jin, thank you very much. Did you say something, Tsubaki? No, nothing. Speaking of which, Noelle, how skilled are you with cooking? Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> um, I guess I'm sort of confident. And thus, Noelle killed the entire school. That sounds promising. What about you, Tsubaki? A little. I have some interest for it. What about you, Nania? Um... Hmm? Nania, what's the matter? Allow me to introduce myself. Huh? What are you talking about? We already did introductions a long time ago, when you first came to our room. I'm Makoto Nanaya. Please feel free to call me Makoto. Huh? huh? Makoto? Wait, your name's Makoto? I thought Nanaya was your first name all along. What? Why did you keep quiet about it? <laughs> If you looked at the roll call sheet, you could have figured that out instantly. What? You... you have to put it into words so people will know. Makoto? I see. Makoto, huh? Well, I hope we can become really great friends, Makoto. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to that, Noelle. Tsubaki, 
It's my pleasure, Makoto, Noelle, friends. Friends. friends! And so their laughter echoes down the hallway. Extra episode, Heart to Heart, End. Oh, that was nice. And I think that was just the right amount of length as well. Like, it wasn't too long, but it was long enough to get the whole point across and also kind of not only show how they became friends, but also, like, their each, each of their internal struggles and how they're kind of helping each other out with that. That was nice. That was nice. So again, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're going to split the video here to make it more digestible. But for those of us on stream, I know I've said this a lot today, since we've done so many things, we're gonna stick around and do Sector 7.